All right, let's go to the Big Easy and figure out who else is going to play for the national title. Texas and Washington in the Sugar Bowl. And I got to tell you, J.D., I have no read on this game at all in terms of who I think is going to win. I'm just being honest with you here. I'm so excited for it. I'm so excited for Michael Penix and those receivers against a really good Texas secondary with a, you know, the Texas defensive line. We talked about them all season. We've not talked as much about the secondary, but those guys are deep and they can cover and they can make plays. And if they can, you know, pick off Penix once or twice, different game. But I think we we also, you know, Braylon Trice, ZTF, Washington can get after your quarterback too. And we haven't seen any disastrous Quinn Ewers game yet this season. We saw a couple of them in, in 2022. They could create one of the, like, that's what I'm more worried about. Like an off game for Penix is not great. An off game for Ewers, you're losing. Yeah. I mean, either way, like you said, for, uh, for both these quarterbacks, like it's going to be more shots than Bourbon Street offensively downfield. Like you got NFL wide receivers, two NFL quarterbacks. Uh, it's going to be a high scoring affair from where I'm sitting. I think w- when I try to break this game down, I break it down through the lens of when I played the NCAA 14 video game. And I know you're, you're an NCAA guy as well, Andy. <laughs> it's going to be so many Absolutely. points. Scored. Like it's going to be, it's going to be like trade and drives, going to be who has more bullets. And whenever I played that kind of game with my buddy, it came down to two things. One, who gets that key turnover? And I think I lean towards Texas in that scenario. And then two, who can downshift the best and just kind of make it ugly in the fourth quarter and run the football and kind of play keep away. I think both those things favor Texas. Texas, that's who they are offensively. On, you know, up front, they run for at around 200 yards a game. And then the depth they have in the backfield, whether it's Jaden Blue, whether it's C.J. Baxter, Keelan Robinson, I think they have some uh, some different sets of tires they can rotate through there. So for that reason... I could see a game where Roma Dunze just says, hey, I'm him today. I'm taking over, and that's the way that Washington wins. But going back to what we said about our previous playoff game as well, I think there's more ways, more styles Texas can play in this game to end up finding a way. Yeah, and Texas having such a diversity of skill, talent, A.D. Mitchell, J.T. Sanders, I think C.J. Baxter's uh, very good as a freshman running back. A lot of, lot of ways to beat you. That said, what you just described, you talk about a team that can muck it up, that can can run out the clock, run you know run the ball to victory in the fourth quarter. Is that not what Washington did to Oregon in the past yeah. championship game? Like no, it, it absolutely is. And I think that was one of the first things that I said to you when we got to Atlanta because Oregon had just played Washington. I was like, Andy, I did not see a world where Washington's offensive line did what they did to Oregon the night before, and so. I mean, I could sit here yet again for another time this season and say, hey, I was wrong about Washington, and that would be, I mean, par for the course for what this season has been with me picking the Huskies. Uh, also, I think they're like kind of the Alex Honnold of this entire college football playoff. Like, they don't flinch when they're up there on the cliff. They, they don't feel yeah. that pressure free solo and in a one-score game. They're 7-0 and in one-score games. And so the way that they you know, are kind of immune to that pressure, that could also be a thing that favors Washington and kind of could be a, a path for them to victory as well. So... I think the depth of Texas still makes me lean towards the Longhorns in this one with what they have in that backfield. But if it's the same kind of game style they had in that first half against Oregon, like you might be seeing purple for the second year in the college football national title. Well, I I think for those reasons you just said, I'm taking Washington here. I'm I'm getting points against the spread. So even if Texas wins, as long as it's close, I'm good. But I think Washington can win this thing straight up. I think Washington can make the national title game. So get, give me the Huskies, and I appreciate the four and a half points. There we go. I'll take Washington to cover, so I'll really sit on the fence here. I'll take Washington to cover right around a field goal game, but I will take Texas to outright win and uh, maybe get a little rematch in the, uh, the national title between Bama and Texas, which I want to be a fan of, but if we get it, we get it. And uh, regardless, any four of these teams, I think, for the first time in a long time, has a real shot to take home the, uh, the, the hardware. Absolutely. This is the first time in the 14 playoff era, which ends after this, but the first time I felt like all four teams had a chance to win the national title. And I am very excited about that. And I hope everybody else is too. Thank you so much for watching. Just a reminder, subscribe to this channel right here. So you never miss an episode of Andy Staples on three. And oh, by the way, watch all the other great videos on the On3Sports YouTube channel.